A steam plant using a castle steam boiler, part 16, fitting a Stuart Models displacement lubricator and the final steam test. The previous displacement lubricator worked fine but it was a bit on the small side. The hole in the T-piece is far too small to fit a Stuart Models lubricator and in this clip I'm enlarging the hole using a 7 seconds of an inch diameter twist drill. This is tapping size for quarter by 32 threads per inch. I'm actually threading the body of the T-piece, not the nut on the end. That was already enlarged to a quarter of an inch in diameter. Because this lubricator is a good bit bigger than the other one, I need to mount it higher up. And this clip shows the T-piece fitted. I made two more pieces of pipe. Not only did I make up the pipe that goes from the glove valve to the lubricator's T-piece, I remade the S-bend piece of pipe that goes down to the steam inlet. The lubricator is fitted to the T-piece as usual using some Loctite 542 to seal it. Now for the really exciting bit. I'm removing the cap of the displacement lubricator to fill it with steam oil. A quick reminder to all the beginners out there, do not use motor oil, do not use machine oil, it needs to be steam oil which is very thick and gloopy. And after that flashback to some of my past girlfriends, I'm going to replace the cap on the lubricator. On most steam engines I find that the best position for the oil regulator valve is one turn out from fully in. This however may vary on different types of steam engines. You need to experiment to get the oil feed right. I've connected a gas supply, I've connected a water supply and fitted the required pieces of silicone rubber tubing for the water feed to the hand pump, the drain from the condenser and the drain from the water gauge blowdown valve. It's time now to pump some water into the boiler using the hand pump. Because this is a gas fired boiler this is enough water really but I decided to pump in a little bit more which just makes it take a lot longer to raise steam. I lit the boiler and with its very small number 5 jets it's slowly raising steam. This is a good time to lubricate the engine, lubricate every moving part. I decided to drain some water out of the boiler because it was taking too long to raise steam. The can of gas that I'm using is about half full so most of the propane content has gone, it's now chilled butane. To stop the tank from chilling I temporarily sat it in a plastic container which has got some water in it, but I can't recommend this owing to health and safety reasons. The fact that the condenser and the water gauge blowdown also drain into this plastic tub will help to stop the tank from chilling but I don't recommend it. What's this I see coming out of the chimney? I think it's some steam. Well, some water vapour anyway. This is not from inside the boiler, it's just from the flue and the cavity at the front of the boiler. It's just condensation. The whistle works beautifully, even with only £20 per square inch on the clock. Time to rotate the engine to clear the condensate. I didn't need to open the drain cocks, the condensate cleared into the condenser with no problem at all. This engine, in my opinion, is at its best when it's running slowly. So there's no stress in chasing high pressure and pumping up the boiler. Must have more steam, must have more steam. None of that. This engine just runs beautifully at about £25 per square inch of steam pressure. I turned the tap on the gas tank down to low, so there's not much pressure going to the burners either. This is a very low stress, relaxing steam plant, apart from the leak. The governor doesn't work properly anyway, and the governor mechanism leaks badly. A nice quick fix, I dismantled it and refitted the valve barrel into the housing using some Loctite 542 hydraulic seal. And now when I refitted all of the parts, it works perfectly. The arm from the governor also goes up and down. The screw holding it to the barrel was not tight in the first place. I turned the gas off while I did this small job. So the steam pressure has dropped to just above zero. But despite this, the engine still runs at a realistic speed. I relit the burners, kept the gas pressure low, and very shortly the pressure should go up to about 25 pounds per square inch. At no time during this second steam test did my carbon monoxide alarm go off, so that's a good thing. Although if I turned up the pressure, even on these two number five jets, there'd be a horrible smell emanating from the chimney 
with the accompanying howling noise plus the beautiful sound of my carbon monoxide alarm going off. By reducing the pressure from the gas canister using the valve on it, everything's okay. And that's it, there's no more I can say. The engine runs very well, the boiler is performing okay. This is the final episode and the owner will be coming to collect it next week. In the last episode, I packed the stuffing glands and as you can see, this one particularly at the top doesn't leak at all. There's a tiny dribble on the one on the steam chest. But that's okay because it will lubricate the valve guide which supports the valve rod. I've got nothing more to say so I'll sign off by saying stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.